Hey there calendar users, thanks for stopping by. In this video, we're going to be going over how to use and create the one-on-one -on -one scheduling event. Um, the one-on-one -on -one scheduling event is our most common scheduling event. It is just you sending somebody your link and then finding a time to meet with you. While the link looks at all of your connected calendars, your availability, you'll set all sorts of rules and all that good stuff that we will go over now. So. Um, here's our workspace. You can see here's a one-on-one. -on -one. Here's a one-on-one. -on -one. We have several one-on-one -on -one scheduling events here. So let's go through um, creating one and getting one set up. So you'll go to create scheduling events. You'll select the one-on-one. -on -one. This is what we're going over now. Again, it's going to be an invitee. You can just schedule a meeting with one host, which would most likely be yourself. So you can just send somebody your link and they can look at it and find times you are free. So let's create one here. Let's just name this Oh General Chat with Nick. You'll put in your scheduling page that you want it to be. You can see the link is already starting to be generated. So this link is what it will uh, be. So we'll put a description in there. This is what the scheduler will see. So something along the lines of feel free to pick a time that works best for you. Looking forward to chatting. So along those lines. Get you a good color in there. We'll continue. This is what you're going to put in your working hours or your availability. Basically within this time frame is going to be when these people can schedule with you. Now it's going to be looking at your connected calendars for your availability as well. Right? So just because these times might be open, it's going to be looking at your connected calendars to see when you're busy and free so that you're not double booked. So let's say I didn't want to take these chats on Friday ever. I could just take Friday out of there. You know, I could shrink this up, add more times, you know, whatever, right? Because um, you're probably free at three and four in the morning, right? But you don't want people to book at that time. So this is kind of like your working hours, your general overview of time that you want to take these meetings. And then within this time frame, it's going to be looking at your uh, connected calendars for your availability, like we talked about earlier. So that's what you'll set here. You can see your time durations. You have 15 minutes, 30, 45 hour. You can customize it, any, uh, customize it for more um, different times. You can select multiple times to offer to people. So you could give them a 15 minute option and a 30. Um, we'll set that for this example. Um, but if you just set one time, then it would only you know give them the one time for the meeting. So you that is in your control. Date range, you have infinitely, which just means that the link is going to work. Um, always, like you could book out several months from now if you wanted to. Date range, you know, I could set it here to where, you know, this link is only available for a week now, right? Something like that. Um, or you could do rolling days where you could have it set for a few days here and then it would keep rolling over, as you can see. So we'll do infinite link for this link. You'll start customizing your availability. Um, start setting some rules for it, like your buffer time, your time in between meetings, so they're not just back to back to back to back. Your start time increment, I usually have mine set for 30. That way when somebody books a meeting with me, it's going to be at 1, 1 1.30, 2, 2.30. I don't get meetings scheduled at like 1.15 to 1.45 or, you know, 1.45 to 2.15, right? If you have it set for 15 minutes, then that would be an option. So totally personal preference, just kind of like when you want uh, the time that you want your meetings to start. Schedule notice is going to be how much notice you want when somebody books. If you have no notice set, then somebody could get your link, look at it, and they're like, oh, good, he's free in five minutes and book, where you probably might want some notice, right? Um, I usually have mine set for like 30 minutes, but you could totally set it for however you wanted. We have these options right here, or you can put a custom option in there. You can uh, set the maximum number of these events that you want to take in a day. It's the number of meetings you want booked in a day and you can limit the amount of guests that they can invite um, as well. This last part here is kind of a unique use case. Most people do not disable their conflict checking, but you do have that option. This would turn off um, the system from looking at your connected calendars, right? So most of the time you want your connected calendars to be looked at so that you don't get double booked. This would allow you to be double booked if you were in that, uh, that use case. This would turn off that conflict checking. So we're not going to click that for this one because we do want to make sure that we are not double booked. So we'll continue on. Um, you're going to select your host. If you're an admin in the workspace, you can uh, 
create meetings for other people. You can create times, you can create scheduling events for other people. So this is where you would do that, but we're just creating it for ourselves. So I am the host. Um, calendar here. Again, it's looking at all of your calendars for your availability, but you can kind of pick which calendar you want to get the confirmation email, um, the email reminders, text reminders, all that good stuff. In the email that the person booking on you will see, that's who they will see that they're meeting with, with this email. Location, in-person location, put any type of web conference link in there you like, phone number, and then we have Zoom, Google Meets, and Microsoft Teams integration, so it just auto makes the link for you. We'll click Zoom for this use case. Um, you can invite a permanent guest if you like, uh, meaning that it's just a calendar that's always invited uh, to any meetings that are scheduled through this link. It doesn't look at their availability or anything. They're just always invited to these meetings. And then you can also put in emails in here to block people. So the last thing we're going to do is set our email reminders, our text reminders, add custom questions. Those custom questions are the Questions that are on the form, like the last form that people fill out when they book. Naming email is there by default, but you know we could ask something like, you know, company name, and then you can decide whether you want to require it or not. How they answer the question. So we'll do company name here, required, and then we'll also ask for their. Uh, let's just say we want their phone number, but we won't make that required. So we'll leave that uh, not filled in, and then answer type phone number so we put that in so that way it you know kind of gives them the correct format to uh, put their number in uh, moving on you can collect payments if you want with the stripe integration if you wanted to charge people to book with you this is where you would do that um, confirmation page or link direct you can redirect people so that when they book um, it'll automatically take them to a different page um, however you wanted to um, organize that but you do have that option to uh, have a redirect there boom boom and you can see where it's all in the confirmation so after they book you can also make uh, a scheduling event private and um, this kind of just gives you some more control over who's booking with you that way the link doesn't automatically just show up on your scheduling page you can make a private which means you would have to uh, send that link to that person it's not just going to be sitting there on your scheduling page so there we go we kind of went through everything let's create it and look at what we've created so scroll up here Here's the link that we just created, the one-on-one, -on -one, one location, that Zoom, these are the times that we're offering. So let's click on it and see what it looks like if someone's going to book with us. Here's all the stuff we put in. Remember we picked that we wanted to be a part of this customer success meetings page. Here's the title of it. Here's that text we put in there, the instructions, description. It's at the Zoom meeting. They can pick 15 or 30. Now they're just gonna start looking for uh, open times here. So let's say they wanted to book Monday the 4th. Here we have it. Here's some days they can book, you know, 30 minute increments and they're good. I, I had it set for 15 minutes, which is the default, which is why that 9.15 time is available. If I selected the time start increment for 30 minutes, then only this 9 to 9.30, 9.30 to 10 would show, but we did allow for the 15. So that's why those are in there as well. We'll click that, confirm. And then here are those custom questions, right? Name and email are there by default. Remember, we asked that company name, made that one required. You can see that by the asterisk. And then we also asked for their phone number. I mean, we did not make that one required. So they would fill all this out and then book the meeting. It would go on everyone's calendar. Everybody would get a confirmation meeting. And then the uh, email and text reminders that we would have set would start going out as well. So uh, there you have it. That is how you can create and use the one-on-one -on -one scheduling event. Thanks, guys. Bye.